Welcome to this session on risk-based policies, where we're going to focus on user history. As an administrator, we typically define a set of criteria or conditions that we want to look at incoming requests for. Uh, and the goal of looking at those conditions is to determine whether the request is just a standard request, which is low, you know, low risk, or whether maybe it, there's a slight deviation from the norm, at which point it's considered medium risk, to a huge deviation from the norm to the point that the risk is too high and you deny access to a particular protected resource. But we're going to look at the, the case, the medium risk case, where a user is potentially asked to do a step up authentication. And with user history, depending on whether the history flag is enabled for that rule, if a user is prompted to do a step up authentication and succeeds with that authentication, then an entry is written to the database so that if that deviation is detected in the future, we will do a lookup of the uh, risk database to determine whether or not the user has already hit that, that uh, condition. And if he or she has, the user will not be prompted to step up authenticate a second time, but will go through as normal. So if we take a look at the risk-based policy configuration itself within Access Manager, there is a tab called User History. By default, it's disabled, but in this scenario here, we're going to enable it. So you simply enable it here. You define how much, how many records you want to maintain for each user. So do you want to keep an infinite amount of data for that particular user, or do you want to restrict it to a certain time frame, a 60, 90 day time frame, for example? The location of the database is very important. Uh, in, in a production environment, you would always go with an external database where you could write the information to an SQL or a Microsoft database or um, an Oracle database, for example. For this uh, scenario here, the example that we're going to go through, I'm going to just simply write it to the local admin console e-directory. And I have an LDAP browser that will show where that uh, rule gets located there. If we look at the rules themselves, uh, there are a series, or there are certain rules that allow you to record history. Uh, geolocation or IP address rules, for example. Let's take a look at this IP address rule. This is a rule that I'm going to use in an example later on. I'm checking for certain subnet ranges here, 149.44, 151.155, for example, and I have the check user history flag. So what happens is when this when a request comes in and control gets passed to the risk code, what we're going to do is we're going to check uh, whether or not the user has a prior record for this particular rule in the database. Now, a, an example of that would be, I, I work from uh, the EMEA office. Uh, I access a particular protected resource on a daily basis. My incoming IP address is always pretty much the same. It's the local uh, EMEA IP address range. If, however, I go off and I work uh, at our headquarters in the US and I access the same protected resource, I may fail the IP address check because I'm coming in from a different uh, subnet range. So I may be considered a uh, medium risk and be asked to step up authentication. In that scenario there, I will step up authenticate and hopefully I'll provide a valid set of credentials which will allow the step up authentication process to complete successfully and I'll be allowed to access the resource from the office in the US. Now with history uh, enabled, user history enabled, when that step up authentication takes place, I will write a record to the database uh, indicating that uh, the user Neil accessed the protected resource from this IP address did step up authentication and succeeded. The next time I go in and access that protected resource from, for example, the US subnet, I will not be prompted to do step up authentication because I have the entry in the user database. So if we take a look at the use case that I've set up here, it's, it's essentially what we just spoke about there. Uh, I have a protected resource that's uh, available on my access gateway where I have the RBA contract IP history contract defined. And that contract is defined over here on the IDP server. And it's essentially going to ask for the username password, and then it's going to call the risk-based authentication method. Uh, 
And the risk-based authentication method doesn't identify the user. It's simply checking the incoming IP address of the user. We'll actually take a look at it here over in the risk-based database. So if we go to the risk-based policy, we'll take a look at uh, the risk policy itself. And I'm going to go into this one here, which is the policy that I have tied to that protected uh, to that uh, contract. So in here, I have one simple rule, and the rule is to check the IP address and verify that it comes from a particular range, 147200. And if I'm within that range, I will not be asked to step up. If I'm outside that range, I'll be defined as a medium risk because the risk score is going to be uh, 90. And the risk conditions down here, anything less than 80, I'm just going to allow access. Greater than 80, I'm going to be asked to do step up authentication. So if I bring up a browser now and I'll access that protected resource, I'm going to access that protected resource for the very first time here. And I'm coming from an IP address outside of the IP address range that I've defined there. So I should theoretically be medium risk and asked to do a step up authentication. And sure enough, well, software on the machine here, there I'm asked to do a step up authentication to um, another contract. I'll enter my credentials and I should be able to see my protected resource. So there I can get access to my protected resource. Now I'm going to bring up an LDAP browser. And the LDAP browser allows me to actually view the contents of the history database. So over here under Access Manager Container and NIDS, I have this risk auth um, container here. Now I'm going to refresh because it was empty. And now that I've done that step up authentication, I should see there is my entry in here. So I have my entry and I have the information that's stored within the risk da database. So here the region, geolocation, IP address, uh, last logged in time. These are all the rules that can actually have that have, you can enable the history flag on. So now I'm going to shut the browser down and I'm going to bring the browser back up again. There. And while before I access, I'm just going to take a look at the rule again. And the rule here is telling me check user history. So because it's a risk-based rule on IP address, it's going to check the user history to see whether or not there is an entry for this particular IP address or this user and this IP address, and whether or not I'd successfully authenticated, done a step-up authentication in the past. So now, in this case here, I'm going to go second time. I'm coming in from the same IP address, so I'm going to be asked for my username and password again. This is the initial authentication. And this time I get in accessing my page without any step up authentication. So that's an example of using risk based policies, uh, the user history within risk based policies, to make sure that you don't have to step up authenticate multiple times once a deviation from the standard's been recognized. Mm -hmm.